Is Rust actually safe? Now, the answer is yes if you're using Rust in the way it was intended to be used. But as many people already know, using Rust in that way is fairly difficult. The borrow checker, for example, different features within Rust make it difficult to write code quickly. Now, the alternative to writing Rust the way it was intended is to use the unsafe keyword to write unsafe Rust. But the question then is, if unsafe Rust exists, is Rust really safe? In this video, we're gonna go over a report by the Rust Foundation that talks about how much of Rust is unsafe Rust and their thoughts on if that underpins the security of the language. Now, if you're new here, hi, this is Level Learning, a channel where I make videos about software security. I personally, as a security researcher for 10 years, really think that Rust is the future of writing safe, and reliable software. Now, that being said, the language is difficult for beginners in my personal opinion. So I wanna dive into you know, how many people have used the unsafe keyword to get around the features that make Rust safe. Now, before we get into the article about unsafe Rust, it's important to talk about what unsafe Rust actually is. So if you think of Rust as this language that has particular features with the borrow checker and it does you know, runtime array access bounds checks, when you add the unsafe keyword to your code, all that does is it adds features that Rust would normally not give you. And these are the features you can think of in your head when you see unsafe Rust code. So dereferencing raw pointers, the whole idea behind Rust is that you don't have raw access to memory. There are gates put around that memory so you don't have you know, race conditions or places where you can use data in a way that's not meant to be used. The more important place that I've seen a lot of unsafe Rust be used is the inclusion of C functions, like external functions, because you're calling outside of your code that the Rust compiler can check. You're hitting what is called a foreign function interface or an FFI. So that code, when you call an external function, is inherently thought to be unsafe. I'm gonna guess it's where a lot of the unsafe Rust code comes from. Unsafe traits, basically you're telling the compiler that your implementation of a trait does adhere to the trait boundaries and you're telling the implementer that it's their job to implement it correctly. Uh, you can mutate statics, so that makes sense. The code is static. That makes sense. A static is by default a global variable. So in Rust, they don't want to have multiple references to mutable variables at the same time. So by mutating statics, you're effectively breaking that rule and then accessing the fields of a union. So a union, if you don't know what a union is, effectively it's a uh, structure in memory where every field occupies the same uh, place of memory. So like if you have an int and a character in a union, the first byte of that int will be represented by that character and accessing those fields is known as undefined behavior. So within unsafe Rust, you can do that. So based on all of these features, I'm curious like how much of that code actually exists in the wild. And so here's an article written by the Rust Foundation, Unsafe Rust in the Wild, notes on the current state of unsafe Rust. With so many damaging software exploits haunting our industry and so much at stake, software foundations, technology consortiums, and governments around the world are taking notice and advocating for improved programming practices and tools. Yeah, I mean, so I think CISA, the Cyber and Infrastructure Security Agency of the US actually put out a paper, uh, two of them actually, one about how the future of code needs to be written in memory safe languages just for the safety of, of the nation and the world. Uh, and also two, they put out a paper that kind of, they go through a lot of software to figure out how much of code is written in memory safe languages. And I think the answer is only like 20 or 30% of software. And that's just like all of software. That's not even like the majority of the software that's being, that's being used. Now, I know Microsoft is putting an effort forward to write part of the Windows kernel, and I know the Linux kernel as well is Rust in the kernel to make it a memory safe kernel, uh, but we're not there yet, right? Rewriting effectively all of software is going to take a long time uh, to do. So anyway, programs access memory. This concept is fundamental to computing. Depending on the programming language we use to write code, there are various ways to manage allocation and use that memory. Each approach requires care and caution. Yeah, this is important to understand, dude. Like at the end of the day, any code that you're writing anywhere, be it C, assembly, Rust, Python, literally all it's doing is taking memory out of memory, putting it into a register. It's doing some kind of math on that register, and then it's putting it back into memory. And then there's user input that affects that operation. Like literally that is all computers do at a fundamental level. Unintended out of scope access to a program's memory regions can expose sensitive data or serve as an entry point for exploitation, posing significant risk and potentially contributing to zero day attacks. In short, whether a programmer manages to allocate memory manually or relies on the language and compiler to do it for them, robust memory management practices are absolutely necessary. I was gonna talk about this, but I see the next paragraph. Memory safety issues account for a significant share of software vulnerabilities. Malicious actors are well aware of this and use the evolving set of tactics to exploit memory unsafe code and some of the most recognizable and damaging software attacks. 
in the recent years, such as Heartbleed. Interesting that they cite Heartbleed here because that attack happened in like 2013. There have been plenty more. But yeah, I mean, this, this whole paragraph can be summed up by a report, I think, by either Google or Microsoft said that 70% of vulnerabilities that have been exploited in the wild are the result of memory corruption, right? And memory corruption takes two forms. It's either spatial or temporal, right? So spatial is basically, I have a buffer, the buffer is 64 bytes I write outside of that 64 bytes and can abuse the control flow metadata, like the, the return pointer, for example, uh, to, to take advantage of that vulnerability. And then temporal vulnerabilities are like, if I have data that I have in a memory buffer and then I free it and then I use it later because I use it after I freed it, right? That, that's an issue in terms of uh, memory management, but also two uh, race conditions where time of check versus time of use, where I check a value and then use it after I've checked it is known as a race and that can cause memory safety issues as well. So the power and promise of Rust. The Rust programming language is frequently cited by memory safety advocates as one of the most secure languages on the market today. A memory safe language by default through a concept called ownership, Rust provides rules and guarantees for memory management and centers security as a first class concept. Yeah, so the only reason that I like Rust is the amount of effort they put into being a safety first language. And I know people typically say like, oh, like you can write safe C too. Like it's just easy, it's a skill issue. Like, hey man, I get that. It's been 50 years. Years. C came out in 1972, and there are still memory corruption vulnerabilities. The power of C is that it gives you the ability to do literally whatever you want. You can make a pointer to null, you can make a pointer to quad F, and you can just write data and read data, and that's awesome, and that's great for performance software. But that's not great for safe software. So features like ownership where variables are owned and can't be used unless borrowed, like that kind of stuff does create great safety for software. Now programs using Rust are unable to compile if memory management rules are violated, essentially eliminating the possibility of a memory issue at runtime. Yep, so Rust literally creates compile time rules that prevent you from doing use after freeze and having two mutable references at the same time to a variable. And what it does is it basically disallows you from writing unsafe code. This provides Rust developers and users of applications written in Rust with a high degree of confidence that memory vulnerabilities need not be a concern. Yeah, so my, my litmus test for this is whenever I have a new language, I immediately go into it and I try to write like a basic HTTP server. And I try to see how easy is it for me to create a memory corruption vulnerability using a string operation or accessing outside of that memory. And in both Rust and Zig, it was nearly impossible. Like I could not do it. Now, I know there is the CVRS repo that shows you ways you can effectively uh, take the lifetimes of variables in Rust and morph them to make them unsafe, but that's like very convoluted examples. Generally speaking, if you're writing normal Rust, it's really hard to write unsafe Rust without the unsafe keyword. And this is where this comes in. Now, safe Rust and unsafe Rust. Although Rust is a powerful tool for memory uh, security and safety, the power of its safety guarantees can come limiting when the program cannot actually go wrong, but the compiler is unable to guarantee that itself. The programmer can prove the impossibility of undefined behavior in ways not available to the compiler. In these instances, Rust programmers will apply the unsafe keyword to indicate a function or code segment which has A, additional safety considerations, or B, invariants a programmer must manually follow to guarantee safety that are not necessarily expressible by Rust or the function itself. The unsafe keyword enables developers to dereference a raw pointer, modify a mutable static variable, and crucially, call unsafe functions. Yeah, so like, like I was saying before, you have these compile time guarantees that Rust gives you where Rust can prove that something can't go wrong. Well, sometimes that can be overbinding or that like, you know, you need to do something in code that is necessarily safe, but Rust can't guarantee it. So you can wrap a function in unsafe to kind of get around that, right? And so obviously by putting an unsafe keyword in a memory safe language, the question is, does that devalue uh, the language? So while using unsafe Rust can theoretically produce vulnerabilities similar to that of memory unsafe languages, there are four primary safeguards to minimize those chances near to zero. I'm very curious what, this what they have to say. Using the unsafe keyword in Rust is an explicit act requiring the developer to opt in to proceed. This means that you will never be able to enter an unsafe context within your Rust code without making the conscious effort to do so. Other languages may allow you to call unsafe or unmanaged code directly. Yeah, this is my big thing about unsafe. Like you can write a majority of Rust code without having to use the unsafe keyword. And then from a code audit perspective, if I'm writing safety critical Rust, or I'm running code that's gonna go into an operating system somewhere, I'm going to pay 
particular attention to code that is wrapped in unsafe. It's literally going to be a, an actual like red flag that says, hey, we have to go into this deeper to verify that the unsafe code is still safe, right? So I think this is good. Like the fact that the unsafe features of Rust are opt in and not opt out makes it less of a problem that I think people inherently think. Unsafe has been isolated in its own code blocks. Anything goes wrong while, the, while using unsafe Rust, it is clear what code has likely caused the issue. Yeah, so there's also places, so you don't just put unsafe on a function or unsafe on a trait. You can literally have like two lines of unsafe code where you dereference a raw pointer so that the rest of the code around it is still considered safe. You just, you know that like line 69 is, uh, is an issue. There are a limited number of ways to use unsafe and all safe Rust code can continues to have its normal safety checks even inside of an unsafe block. Yeah, so this is an issue that I actually, or a mistake that I actually made a few times. I was not aware that the Rust compiler was still doing borrow checking within unsafe blocks. I thought it turned off all those features. Unsafe code still gets checked by the borrow checker. So like, it, it's not like it's disabling memory safety within Rust. It's just, like I said, it's, it's adding these features. It's not taking anything away. And then the Rust type system will still provide safety constraints for safe Rust types, even within an unsafe block. Okay, and that's part of my issue too, is like, if I have an unsafe block and I have to go into a function call for a huge structure, is that gonna disable all the safety within that block? And the answer here is, is no. Okay, but again, like in this article written in 2024, they have to cite a CVE from 2018, 2019. That's a pretty good track record compared to Windows. Um, to determine the risk posed by unsafe Rust, we must examine how much actual Rust code uses the unsafe keyword. Yeah, I'm very curious what goes on here. So the canonical way to distribute Rust code is through a package called the crate. Yep. As of May, 2024, there are about 145,000 crates. That's actually a lot. Wow. Of which 127,000 contain significant code. Okay. They're like, they're ignoring all like the is even right. Like the project crates uh, that don't matter. Of those crates, 24,000 make use of the unsafe keyword, which is 19% of all crates. Very interesting. And 34.35 make a direct function call into another crate that uses the unsafe keyword. Okay, so it's very interesting. So 20% of all crates use unsafe. 34% make a call into a crate that uses unsafe. Okay, so like 35% of Rust depends on the unsafe keyword. Very interesting. That's, that is a lot more than I expected. Now, again, based on what they said about the behavior of unsafe, you know, I'm not like super ex like worried about that, but that is a much higher number than I thought. Now, most of these unsafe Rust uh, uses are calls into existing third-party non-Rust language code or libraries such as C or C++, the FFI. Yeah, that makes sense. So again, like Rust is a fairly immature language. There's so much that it needs to do to grow to be an entire ecosystem ready language. And as a result, like they're going to depend on external libraries to do things that are not currently done in Rust. And as a result, like I said before, FFI, right? Every call into a C or C++ library will require the unsafe keyword. In fact, the crate with the most uses of unsafe keyword is the Windows crate, baby. I love you, Windows. That's funny as fuck. I think that's awesome. That's, that's like poetry. That's just... Chef's, chef's kiss to me, big fan of that. Uh, which allows Rust developers to call into various Windows APIs. Yeah, I get that. That's That makes sense. It's just very poetic and hilarious that that's the nature of the Windows crate. Uh, this does not mean that the code in these unsafe Rust blocks is, are inherently exploitable. The majority of all code is most likely not, but the special care must be taken when using unsafe Rust in order to avoid potential vulnerabilities. Yeah, it makes sense. At a superficial glance, it may appear that unsafe Rust undercuts the memory safety benefits Rust is becoming increasingly celebrated for, and that's what I thought. I thought literally unsafe like turned off everything, which I, I learned recently is not the case. In reality, the unsafe keyword comes with special safeguards and can be a powerful way to work with fewer restrictions when a function requires flexibility so long as standard precautions are used. And then this is where like the human factors of coding comes in, right? Like you are, you still are doing pull requests. You still are doing fuzzing. You still are doing security audits. Like the, like using unsafe Rust is okay, provided you're not just like closing your eyes and pressing the, the shift to prod button. Safety and security is shared responsibility. As discussed, Rust lives up to its reputation as an excellent and transformative tool for safe and secure programming, even in an unsafe context. But this reputation requires resources, collaboration, and constant examination to uphold properly. For example, the Rust project is continuing to develop tools like Miri. Miri is an undefined behavior detection tool. I'll have to play with this. I have not heard of this or used this. Sounds very cool though. 
Uh, to allow the checking of unsafe Rust code, the Rust Foundation is committed to its work through its security initiative, a program to support and advance state of security within the Rust programming language. Under the security initiative, the Rust Foundation's technology team has developed new tools like Painter, Typomania, and Sandpit to detect vulnerabilities within Rust code, giving users insight into vulnerabilities before they can happen and allowing for a quick response if exploitation occurs. Very cool. Safety, safety. Safety is a shared responsibility. This concept is fundamental to healthy communities. Between the developers using unsafe Rust, the groups advocating for the use of security enhancing tools like Rust and language language stewards like our organization, we all have a part to play in secure programming practices. Collaborative, ongoing focus on safety and security will allow the language to remain as resistant to vulnerabilities as possible well into the future. Yeah, 100%. Shared responsibility. It's on the community to provide their insights. It's on people to try to write the safest code. It's on auditors to look at the code and be like, hey, what are we doing here? Um, overall, I think my opinion on Rust has not changed. I am shocked that 35% of, of code and, and crates is it, it accesses an unsafe keyword. But again, like Windows, for example, if you have a crate who's going to run the Windows API calls, every function call is going to be unsafe. It's just the nature of how FFIs work. So I get that. My, my state on, on coding in general is still, if you want to learn to code, you need to learn how computers work. The best way to do that is to learn C and assembly. I personally believe that. Once you learned how computers work and how C does not work in a safe way, then pick a memory safe or a language that tastes like it's memory safe, like Rust, for example, or Zig. That's my current take. If you like this video, do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe, and then go check out this video over here, this one, about why I think uh, Zig will truly change the world of coding. We'll see you there.